The canon of the New Testament is the set of books Christians regard as divinely inspired and constituting the New Testament of the Christian Bible. For most, it is an agreed-upon list of 27 books that includes the canonical Gospels, Acts, Letters of the Apostles, and Revelation. The books of the canon of the New Testament were written before 120 AD for the Orthodox. The recognition of these writings as authoritative was formalized in the Second Council of Trullan of 692. The Catholic Church made dogmatic definition upon its biblical canon in 382 at the Council of Rome as well as at the Council of Trent of 1545, reaffirming the canons of Florence of 1442 and North African Councils Hippo and Carthage of 393 to 419. For the Church of England, it was made dogmatic on the 39 Articles of 1563, for Calvinism, on the Westminster Confession of Faith of 1647. <laughs> Early collections Topic. Writings attributed to the Apostles circulated among the earliest Christian communities. The Pauline epistles were circulating, perhaps in collected forms, by the end of the 1st century AD. Justin Martyr, in the mid-2nd century, mentions "...memoirs of the Apostles," as being read on "...the day called that of the Son," Sunday, alongside the "...writings of the Prophets." A defined set of four Gospels the Tetramorph was asserted by Irenaeus, c. 180, who refers to it directly. By the early 3rd century, Origen may have been using the same 27 books as in the present New Testament canon, though there were still disputes over the acceptance of the letter to the Hebrews, James, 2 Peter, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation, known as the Antilegomena. Likewise, the Muratorian fragment is evidence that, perhaps as early as 200, there existed a set of Christian writings somewhat similar to the 27 book NT canon, which included four Gospels and argued against objections to them. Thus, while there was a good measure of debate in the early church over the New Testament canon, the major writings are claimed to have been accepted by almost all Christians by the middle of the 3rd century. In his Easter letter of 367 Athanasius, Bishop of Alexandria, gave a list of the books that would become the 27-book NT canon, and he used the word canonized, Greek canonizomena canonizomena in regard to them. The first council that accepted the present canon of the New Testament may have been the Synod of Hippo Regius in North Africa 393. A brief summary of the Acts was read at and accepted by the councils of Carthage in 397 and 419. These councils were under the authority of St. Augustine, who regarded the canon as already closed. Pope Damasus I S. Council of Rome in 382, if the Decretum Gelasianum is correctly associated with it, issued a biblical canon identical to that mentioned above, or, if not, the list is at least a 6th century compilation. Likewise, Damasus' commissioning of the Latin Vulgate edition of the Bible, c. 383, was instrumental in the fixation of the canon in the West. In c. 405, Pope Innocent I sent a list of the sacred books to a Gallic bishop, Exapirius of Toulouse. Christian scholars assert that, when these bishops and councils spoke on the matter, however, they were not defining something new but instead, were ratifying what had already become the mind of the Church. Thus, some claim that, from the 4th century, there existed unanimity in the West concerning the New Testament canon, and that, by the 5th century, the Eastern Church, with a few exceptions, had come to accept the Book of Revelation and thus had come into harmony on the matter of the canon. Nonetheless, full dogmatic articulations of the canon were not made until the Canon of Trent of 1546 for Roman Catholicism, the Gallic Confession of Faith of 1559 for Calvinism, the 39 Articles of 1563 for the Church of England, and the Synod of Jerusalem of 1672 for the Greek Orthodox. Topic. Comparison between earliest biblical canons Topic. Topic. Early Christianity c. 30 In the 100-year period extending roughly from 50 to 150, a number of documents began to circulate among the churches, including epistles, gospels, memoirs, apocalypses, homilies, and collections of teachings. While some of these documents were apostolic in origin, others drew upon the tradition the apostles and ministers of the Word had utilized in their individual missions. 
still others represented a summation of the teaching entrusted to a particular church center. Several of these writings sought to extend, interpret, and apply apostolic teaching to meet the needs of Christians in a given locality. <laughs> Clement of Rome By the end of the first century, some letters of Paul were known to Clement of Rome Florida, 96, together with some form of the words of Jesus, but while Clement valued these highly, he did not regard them as scripture, graph, a term he reserved for the Septuagint. Metzger 1987 draws the following conclusion about Clement. Clement makes occasional reference to certain words of Jesus, though they are authoritative for him, he does not appear to inquire how their authenticity is ensured. In two of the three instances that he speaks of remembering the words of Christ or of the Lord Jesus, it seems that he has a written record in mind, but he does not call it a gospel. He knows several of Paul. S epistles, and values them highly for their content, the same can be said of the epistle to the Hebrews, with which he is well acquainted. Although these writings obviously possess for Clement considerable significance, he never refers to them as authoritative. Scripture Second Peter Within the New Testament itself, there is reference to at least some of the works of Paul as Scripture. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 16 says, He Paul writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other Scriptures, to their own destruction. The reference to, presumably the Septuagint, as the other. Scripture denotes that the author of 2 Peter regarded, at least, the works of Paul that had been written by his time as Scripture. It is difficult to determine the date of composition. Commentaries and reference books have placed 2 Peter in almost every decade from AD 60 to 160. Topic: <laughs> Marcion of Sinop. Topic. Marcion of Sinop, a bishop of Asia Minor who went to Rome and was later excommunicated for his views, was the first of record to propose a definitive, exclusive, unique list of Christian scriptures, compiled sometime between 130–140 AD. Though Ignatius did address Christian scripture, before Marcion, against the perceived heresies of the Judaizers and Docetists, he did not define a list of scriptures. In his book Origin of the New Testament, Adolf von Harnack argued that Marcion viewed the church at this time as largely an Old Testament church, one that follows the testament of the Creator God, without a firmly established New Testament canon, and that the church gradually formulated its New Testament canon in response to the challenge posed by Marcion. Marcion rejected the theology of the Old Testament entirely and regarded the God depicted there as an inferior being. In the antithesis, he claimed the theology of the Old Testament was incompatible with the teaching of Jesus regarding God and morality. Marcion believed that Jesus had come to liberate mankind from the authority of the God of the Old Testament, and to reveal the superior God of goodness and mercy, whom he called the Father. Paul and Luke were the only Christian authors to find favor with Marcion, though his versions of these differed from those later accepted by mainstream Christianity also termed Proto-Orthodox Christianity. Marcion created a definite group of books which he regarded as fully authoritative, displacing all others. These comprised ten of the Pauline epistles without the pastorals and a gospel similar to that of Luke. It is uncertain whether he edited these books, purging them of what did not accord with his views, or that his versions represented a separate textual tradition. Marcion's Gospel, called simply the Gospel of the Lord, differed from the Gospel of Luke by lacking any passages that connected Jesus with the Old Testament. He believed that the God of Israel, who gave the Torah to the Israelites, was an entirely different God from the supreme God who sent Jesus and inspired the New Testament. Marcion termed his collection of Pauline epistles the Apostolicon. These also differed from the versions accepted by later Christian orthodoxy. Marcion's list and theology were rejected as heretical by the early church, however, he forced other Christians to consider which texts were canonical and why. He spread his beliefs widely, they became known as Marcionism. In the introduction to his book, Early Christian Writings, Henry Wace stated, A modern divine, 
could not refuse to discuss the question raised by Marcion, whether there is such opposition between different parts of what he regards as the Word of God, that all cannot come from the same author. Ferguson 2002 quotes Tertullian's De Prescription Hereticorum 30, since Marcion separated the New Testament from the Old, he is necessarily subsequent to that which he separated, inasmuch as it was only in his power to separate what was previously united. Having been united previous to its separation, the fact of its subsequent separation proves the subsequence also of the man who effected the separation. Note 61 of page 308 adds, Wolfram Kinzig suggests that it was Marcion who usually called his Bible testamentum Latin for testament. Other scholars propose that it was Melito of Sardis who originally coined the phrase Old Testament, which is associated with supersessionism. Robert M. Price argues that the evidence that the early church fathers, such as Clement, Ignatius, and Polycarp, knew of the Pauline epistles is unclear, and concludes that Marcion was the first person to collect Paul's writings to various churches and to treat ten Pauline letters, some of them Marcion own compositions, together with an earlier version of Luke not the Gospel of Luke as now known. But the first collector of the Pauline epistles had been Marcion. No one else we know of would be a good candidate, certainly not the essentially fictive Luke, Timothy, and Onesimus. And Marcion, as Burkitt and Bauer show, fills the bill perfectly. Topic. Justin Martyr Topic. In the mid-2nd century, Justin Martyr whose writings span the period from c. 145 to 163 mentions the memoirs of the apostles, which Christians called gospels, and which were regarded as on par with the Old Testament. Scholars are divided on whether there is any evidence that Justin included the Gospel of John among the memoirs of the apostles, or whether, on the contrary, he based his doctrine of the Logos on it. Justin quotes the letters of Paul, 1 Peter, and Acts in his writings. In Justin's works, distinct references are found to Romans, 1 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, and 2 Thessalonians, and possible ones to Philippians, Titus, and 1 Timothy. In addition, he refers to an account from an unnamed source of the baptism of Jesus which differs from that provided by the Synoptic Gospels. When Jesus went down in the water, fire was kindled in the Jordan, and when he came up from the water, the Holy Spirit came upon him. The Apostles of our Christ wrote this. Topic. Tatian Tatian was converted to Christianity by Justin Martyr on a visit to Rome around 150 and, after much instruction, returned to Syria in 172 to reform the church there. At some point, it is suggested c. 160, he composed a single harmonized gospel by weaving the contents of the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John together along with events present in none of these texts. The narrative mainly follows the chronology of John. This is called the diatessaron, harmony through four, and it became the official gospel text of the Syriac Church, centered in Edessa. Topic: Irenaeus. Topic. Irenaeus of Lyons referred directly to a defined set of four Gospels the Tetramorph, c. 180. In his central work, Adversus Heresies Irenaeus denounced various early Christian groups that used only one Gospel, such as Marcionism which used only Marcion's version of Luke, or the Ebionites which seem to have used an Aramaic version of Matthew, as well as groups that used more than four Gospels, such as the Valentinians AH Irenaeus declared that the four he espoused were the four pillars of the church, it is not possible that there can be either more or fewer than four he stated, presenting as logic the analogy of the four corners of the earth and the four winds 3 .8. His image, taken from Ezekiel chapter 1, or Revelation chapter 4 verses 6 to 10, of God's throne borne by four creatures with four faces. The four had the face of a man, and the face of a lion, on the right side, and the four had the face of an ox on the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle." Equivalent to the four-formed gospel, is the origin of the conventional symbols of the evangelists, lion Mark, ox Luke, eagle John, man Matthew. 
Irenaeus was ultimately successful in declaring that the four Gospels collectively, and exclusively these four, contained the truth. By reading each Gospel in light of the others, Irenaeus made of John a lens through which to read Matthew, Mark and Luke. Based on the arguments Irenaeus made in support of only four authentic Gospels, some interpreters deduce that the fourfold Gospel must have still been a novelty in Irenaeus's time. Against Heresies 3.11.7 acknowledges that many heterodox Christians use only one gospel while 3.11.9 acknowledges that some use more than four. The success of Tatian's diatessaron in about the same time period is a powerful indication that the fourfold gospel contemporaneously sponsored by Irenaeus was not broadly, let alone universally, recognized. Irenaeus apparently quotes from 21 of the New Testament books and names the author he thought wrote the text. He mentions the four Gospels, Acts, the Pauline epistles with the exception of Hebrews and Philemon, as well as the first epistle of Peter, and the first and second epistles of John, and the book of Revelation. Irenaeus argued that it was illogical to reject Acts of the Apostles but accept the Gospel of Luke, as both were from the same author. In Against Heresies 3.12.12, he ridiculed those who think they are wiser than the Apostles because the Apostles were still under Jewish influence. He may also refer to Hebrews Book 2, Chapter 30, and James Book 4, Chapter 16, and maybe even 2 Peter Book 5, Chapter 28, but does not cite Philemon, 3 John, or Jude. He does think that the letter to the Corinthians, known now as 1 Clement, was of great worth, but does not seem to believe that Clement of Rome was the one author. Book 3, Chapter 3, Verse 3, and seems to have the same lower status as Polycarp's epistle, Book 3, Chapter 3, Verse 3. He does refer to a passage in the Shepherd of Hermas as Scripture Mandate 1 or First Commandment, but this has some consistency problems on his part. Hermas taught that Jesus was not himself a divine being, but a virtuous man who was subsequently filled with the Holy Spirit and adopted as the Son a doctrine called adoptionism. But Irenaeus S own work including his citing of the gospel of John JN 1 to 1 indicates that he himself believed that Jesus was always God topic <laughs> early proto orthodox definition attempts topic in the late 4th century Epiphanius of Salamis died 402, Panarion 29 says the Nazarenes had rejected the Pauline epistles and Irenaeus against Heresies 26.2 says the Ebionites rejected him. Acts chapter 21 verse 21 records a rumor that Paul aimed to subvert the Old Testament against this rumor see Romans chapter 3 verse 8, 331, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 16 says his letters have been abused by heretics who twist them around as they do with the other scriptures. In the 2nd and 3rd centuries Eusebius's Ecclesiastical History 6.38 says the Elchisai made use of texts from every part of the Old Testament and the Gospels, it rejects the Apostle Paul entirely. 4.29.5 says Tatian the Assyrian rejected Paul. S. Letters and Acts of the Apostles, 6.25 says Origen accepted 22 canonical books of the Hebrews plus Maccabees plus the four Gospels but Paul did not so much as write to all the churches that he taught, and even to those to which he wrote he sent but a few lines. Between 140 and 220, both internal and external forces caused proto-Orthodox Christianity to begin to systematize both its doctrines and its view of revelation. Much of the systemization came about as a defense against the diverse early Christian viewpoints that competed with emerging proto-Orthodoxy. The early years of this period witnessed the rise of several strong movements of faith later deemed heretical by the Church in Rome, Marcionism, Gnosticism and Montanism. Marcion may have been the first to have a clearly defined list of New Testament books, though this question of who came first is still debated. The compilation of this list could have been a challenge and incentive to emerging proto-Orthodoxy, if they wished to deny that Marcion's list was the true one, it was incumbent on them to define what the true one was. The expansion phase of the New Testament canon thus could have begun in response to Marcion's proposed limited canon. Muratorian <inaudible> <inaudible> fragment <inaudible> The Muratorian fragment is the earliest known example of a defined list of mostly New Testament books. 
It survives, damaged and thus incomplete, as a bad Latin translation of an original, no longer extant, Greek text that is usually dated in the late 2nd century, although a few scholars have preferred a 4th century date. This is an excerpt from Metzger's translation. The third book of the Gospel is that according to Luke. The fourth is that of John. The Acts of all the Apostles. As for the Epistles of Paul. To the Corinthians 1st, to the Ephesians 2nd, to the Philippians 3rd, to the Colossians 4th, to the Galatians 5th, to the Thessalonians 6th, to the Romans 7th. Once more to the Corinthians and to the Thessalonians. One to Philemon, one to Titus, and two to Timothy. To the Laodiceans, and another to the Alexandrians, both forged in Paul's name to further the heresy of Marcion. The epistle of Jude and two of the above mentioned, or bearing the name of John. And the book of wisdom. We receive only the apocalypses of John and Peter, though some of us are not willing that the latter be read in church. But Hermas wrote the shepherd very recently. And therefore it ought indeed to be read, but it cannot be read publicly to the people in church. This is evidence that, perhaps as early as 200, there existed a set of Christian writings somewhat similar to what is now the 27 book NT, which included four Gospels and argued against objections to them. Topic. Clement of Alexandria Topic. Clement of Alexandria c. 150 c. 215 made use of an open canon. He seemed practically unconcerned about canonicity. To him, inspiration is what mattered. In addition to books that did not make it into the final 27 book NT but which had local acceptance Barnabas, Dadash, I Clement, Revelation of Peter, the Shepherd, the Gospel according to the Hebrews, he also used the Gospel of the Egyptians, preaching of Peter, traditions of Matthias, Sibylline oracles, and the Oral Gospel. He did, however, prefer the four church Gospels to all others, although he supplemented them freely with apocryphal Gospels. He was the first to treat non-Pauline letters of the Apostles other than 2 Peter as scripture he accepted 1 Peter, I and 2 John, and Jude as scripture. Topic. There were those who rejected the Gospel of John and possibly also Revelation and the Epistles of John as either not apostolic or as written by the Gnostic Serenthus or as not compatible with the Synoptic Gospels. Epiphanius of Salamis called these people the Elogi, because they rejected the Logos doctrine of John and because he claimed they were illogical. There may have also been a dispute over the doctrine of the Paraclete. Gaius or Keys, presbyter of Rome early 3rd century, was apparently associated with this movement. Topic. Period of the Seven Ecumenical Councils 325-787 Topic. Topic. Eusebius Topic. Eusebius, in his Church History c. 330, mentioned the books of New Testament according to him. 1. It is proper to sum up the writings of the New Testament which have been already mentioned. First then must be put the Holy Quaternion of the Gospels, following them the Acts of the Apostles, the Epistles of Paul The Epistle of John The Epistle of Peter After them is to be placed, if it really seem proper, the Apocalypse of John, concerning which we shall give the different opinions at the proper time. These then belong among the accepted writings homologamena, 3. Among the disputed writings antilegomena, which are nevertheless recognized by many, are extant the so-called Epistle of James and that of Jude, also the second Epistle of Peter, and those that are called the second and third of John, whether they belong to the evangelist or to another person of the same name. 4. Among the rejected cursive. Lake translation, not genuine writings must be reckoned also the Acts of Paul, and the so-called Shepherd, and the Apocalypse of Peter, and in addition to these the extant Epistle of Barnabas, and the so-called Teachings of the Apostles, and besides, as I said, the Apocalypse of John, if it seem proper, which some, as I said, reject, but which others class with the accepted books. 5. And among these some have placed also the Gospel according to the Hebrews. 
and all these may be reckoned among the disputed books, such books as the Gospels of Peter, of Thomas, of Matthias, or of any others besides them, and the Acts of Andrew and John and the other Apostles, they clearly show themselves to be the fictions of heretics. Wherefore they are not to be placed even among the rejected writings, but are all of them to be cast aside as absurd and impious. The Apocalypse of John, also called Revelation, is counted as both accepted cursip. Lake translation, recognized and disputed, which has caused some confusion over what exactly Eusebius meant by doing so. The disputation perhaps attributed to Origen see also Pamphili c. 330, 3.24.17-18. Pamphili c. 330, 3.3.5 adds further detail on Paul. Paul's fourteen epistles are well known and undisputed. It is not indeed right to overlook the fact that some have rejected the epistle to the Hebrews, saying that it is disputed by the Church of Rome, on the ground that it was not written by Paul. Pamphili c. 330, 4.29.6 mentions the Diatessaron, but their original founder, Tatian, formed a certain combination and collection of the Gospels, I know not how, to which he gave the title Diatessaron, and which is still in the hands of some. But they say that he ventured to paraphrase certain words of the Apostle Paul, in order to improve their style. Topic Codex Claremontinus Topic The Codex Claremontinus, c. 303-67, a page found inserted into a 6th-century copy of the Epistles of Paul and Hebrews, has the Old Testament, including Tobit, Judith, Wisdom, Sirach, 1-2, 4 Maccabees, and the New Testament, plus Acts of Paul, Apocalypse of Peter, Barnabas, and Hermas, but missing Philippians, 1-2 Thessalonians, and Hebrews, Zan and Harnack were of the opinion that the list had been drawn up originally in Greek at Alexandria or its neighborhood tilde 300 AD. According to Juliker the list belongs to the 4th century and is probably of Western origin. Topic Constantine the Greek topic In 331, Constantine I commissioned Eusebius to deliver 50 Bibles for the Church of Constantinople. Athanasius Apol. Const. 4 recorded Alexandrian scribes around 340 preparing Bibles for Constance. Little else is known, though there is plenty of speculation. For example, it is speculated that this may have provided motivation for canon lists, and that Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus may be examples of these Bibles. Together with the Peshitta and Codex Alexandrinus, these are the earliest extant Christian Bibles. Topic Cyril of Jerusalem Topic MacDonald and Sanders 2002, Appendix D2, notes the following list of New Testament books from Cyril of Jerusalem c. 350 from his Catechetical Lectures 4. 36, Gospels 4, Acts, James, 1-2 Peter, 1-3 John, Jude, Paul's Epistles 14, and Gospel of Thomas listed as pseudepigrapha. Topic Council of Laodicea Topic The Council of Laodicea, c. 363, was one of the first councils that set out to judge which books were to be read aloud in churches. The decrees issued by the thirty or so clerics attending were called canons. Canon 59 decreed that only canonical books should be read, but no list was appended in the Latin and Syriac manuscripts recording the decrees. The list of canonical books, Canon 60, sometimes attributed to the Council of Laodicea is a later edition according to most scholars and has a 22-book OT and 26-book NT excludes Revelation. Topic Athanasius Topic In his Easter letter of 367 Athanasius, Bishop of Alexandria, gave a list of exactly the same books as what would become the 27-book NT canon, and he used the word canonized canonizomena in regard to them. Topic Cheltenham, Momsen List Topic The Cheltenham List, c. 365-90, is a Latin list discovered by the German classical scholar Theodor Mommsen published 1886 in a 10th-century manuscript chiefly patristic belonging to the Library of Thomas Phillips at Cheltenham, England. The list probably originated in North Africa soon after the middle of the 4th century. It has a 24-book Old Testament and 24-book New Testament which provides syllable and line counts but omits Jude and James, and perhaps Hebrews, and seems to question the epistles of John and Peter beyond the first. Topic Epiphanies Topic MacDonald and Sanders 2002, Appendix D2, writes the following list for Epiphanius of Salamis c. 374-77, from his Panarion 76.5, Gospels 4, Paul's Epistles 13, Acts, James, Peter, 1-3 John, Jude, Rev, Wisdom, Sirach Topic Apostolic Canon number 85 Topic in c. 
380, the redactor of the Apostolic Constitutions attributed a canon to the Twelve Apostles themselves as the 85th of his list of such apostolic decrees, Canon 85. Let the following books be esteemed venerable and holy by all of you, both clergy and laity. A list of books of the Old Testament, and our sacred books, that is, of the New Testament, are the four Gospels, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the fourteen epistles of Paul, two epistles of Peter, three of John, one of James, one of Jude, two epistles of Clement, and the constitutions dedicated to you, the bishops, by me, Clement, in eight books, which is not appropriate to make public before all, because of the mysteries contained in them, and the acts of us, the apostles, from the Latin version, it is said that the Coptic translation and some Arabic version include Revelation. Topic Amphilachius of Iconium Topic Bishop Amphilachius of Iconium, in his poem Iambics for Seleucus written some time after 394, discusses debate over the inclusion of a number of books that should be received, and seems uncertain about the later epistles of Peter and John, Jude, and Revelation. Topic Pope Damasus I Topic Pope Damasus's commissioning of the Latin Vulgate edition of the Bible to Jerome, c. 383, was instrumental in the fixation of the canon in the West. Pope Damasus I is often considered to be the father of the Catholic canon, since what is thought as his list corresponds to the current Catholic canon. Purporting to date from a «Council of Rome» under Pope Damasus I in 382, the so-called «Damasian list» which some attributed to the Decretum Gelasianum gives a list identical to what would be the Canon of Trent, and, though the text may in fact not be Damasian, it is at least a valuable 6th-century compilation. This list, given below, was purportedly endorsed by Pope Damasus I, a list of books of the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, four books of Gospels, one book of Acts of the Apostles, thirteen letters of the Apostle Paul, one of him to the Hebrews, two of Peter, three of John, one of James, one of Jude, and the Apocalypse of John. The so-called Decretum Gelasianum de Libris Recipiendis et Non Recipiendis, is traditionally attributed to Pope Gelasius I, Bishop of Rome 492-496 AD. However, upon the whole it is probably of South Gallic origin 6th century, but several parts can be traced back to Pope Damasus and reflect Roman tradition. The second part is a canon catalogue, and the fifth part is a catalogue of apocryphal writings which are to be rejected. The canon catalogue gives all 27 books of the Catholic New Testament. Topic Jerome Topic MacDonald and Sanders 2002, Appendix D2, lists the following New Testament books according to Jerome, c. 394, from his Epistle 53, Lords 4, Matt, Mark, Luke, John, Paul's Epistles 14, 1-2 Peter, 1-3 John, Jude, James, Acts, Rev. Topic Augustine and the North African Council Topic Augustine of Hippo declared that one is to prefer those that are received by all Catholic churches to those which some of them do not receive. Among those, again, which are not received by all, he will prefer such as have the sanction of the greater number and those of greater authority, to such as are held by the smaller number and those of less authority. On Christian Doctrines 2.12, Chapter 8, Augustine effectively forced his opinion on the Church by commanding three synods on canonicity, the Synod of Hippo in 393, the Synod of Carthage 397, and another in Carthage in 419 AD M 237-8. Each of these reiterated the same church law, nothing shall be read in church under the name of the divine scriptures except the Old Testament including the Deuterocanonicals and the 27 canonical books of the New Testament. It seems these decrees also declared by fiat that epistle to the Hebrews was written by Paul, for a time ending all debate on the subject. The first council that accepted the present canon of the books of the New Testament may have been the Synod of Hippo in North Africa 393. A brief summary of the Acts was read at and accepted by the Synod of Carthage 397 and Council of Carthage 419. These councils were convened under the authority of St. Augustine, who regarded the canon as already closed. This North African canon reaffirmed at the Council of Trent of 1546. Topic Pope Innocent I Topic in C. 405, Pope Innocent I sent a list of the sacred books to a Gallic bishop, Exapirius of Toulouse, identical with that of Trent. It states 14 epistles of Paul, but ff. Bruce prefers 13 excluding the Hebrews. 
According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, by the turn of the 5th century, the Western Church under Pope Innocent I recognized a biblical canon including the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which was previously established at a number of regional synods, namely the Council of Rome 382, the Synod of Hippo 393, and two Councils of Carthage 397 and 419. Topic Eastern canons Topic The Eastern churches had, in general, a weaker feeling than those in the West for the necessity of making a sharp delineation with regard to the canon. They were more conscious of the gradation of spiritual quality among the books that they accepted e.g. the classification of Eusebius, see also Antilegomena and were less often disposed to assert that the books which they rejected possessed no spiritual quality at all. Similarly, the New Testament canons of the Syriac, Armenian, Georgian, Egyptian Coptic and Ethiopian churches all have minor differences. The Revelation of John is one of the most uncertain books. In the East, Chiliasm and Montanism brought it under suspicion, it was not translated into Georgian until the 10th century, and it has never been included in the official lectionary of the Eastern Orthodox Church, whether in Byzantine or modern times. However, its canonical status is recognized. Topic outside the Empire topic topic Syriac canon topic In the 4th century, the Doctrine of Adai lists a 17-book NT canon using the Diatessaron and Acts and 15 Pauline epistles including 3rd Corinthians. The Syriac Doctrine of Adai c. 400 claims to record the oldest traditions of the Syriac Christianity, and among these is the establishment of a canon. Members of the Church are to read only the Gospel meaning the Diatessaron of Tatian, the Epistles of Paul which are said to have been sent by Peter, from Rome, and the Book of Acts which is said to have been sent by John the son of Zebedee, from Ephesus, and nothing else. For centuries the Diatessaron, along with Acts and the Pauline Epistles except Philemon, comprised the only accepted books of the Syriac Christianity, meaning that Tatian's stricter views, resulting in the rejection in 1 Timothy, did not win out. Moreover, after the pronouncements of the 4th century on the proper content of the Bible, Tatian was declared a heretic and in the early 4th century Bishop Theodoretus of Cyrus and Bishop Rabula of Edessa both in Syria rooted out all copies they could find of the Diatessaron and replaced them with the four canonical Gospels M215. As a result, no early copies of the Diatessaron survive, although a very early fragment suggests it would have been crucial evidence for the true state of the early Gospels CX. By the 5th century, the Syriac Bible, called the Peshitta, was formalized, accepting Philemon, along with James, 1 Peter and 1 John, but excluding 2 John, 3 John, 2 Peter, Jude and Revelation. After the Council of Ephesus, the Church of the East became separated, and retained this canon of only 22 books the Peshitta up to the present day. The Syriac Orthodox Church uses this text as well, known in the West Syriac dialect as the Peshito, but with the addition of the other books normally present in the New Testament canon. The late 5th or early 6th century Peshitta of the Syriac Orthodox Church includes a 22-book NT, excluding 2 Peter, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. The Lee Peshitta of 1823 follows the Protestant canon. MacDonald and Sanders 2002, lists the following Syrian catalogue of St. Catherine's, c. 400, Gospels 4, Matt, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Gal, Rom, Heb, Call, E.P.H., Phil, 1-2 Thess, 1-2 Tim, Titus, Ph.L.M. The Syriac Peshitta, used by all the various Syriac churches, originally did not include 2 Peter, 2 John, 3 John, Jude and Revelation and this canon of 22 books is the one cited by John Chrysostom approximately 347-407 and Theodoret 393-466 from the school of Antioch. It also includes Psalm chapter 151 and Psalm chapters 152-155 and 2 Baruch. Western Syrians have added the remaining five books to their NT canons in modern times such as the Lee Peshitta of 1823. Today, the official lectionaries followed by the Malankara Syrian Orthodox Church, with headquarters at Khatiyam, India, and the Chaldean Syrian Church, also known as the Church of the East Nestorian, with headquarters at Trichor, India, still present lessons from only the 22 books of the original Peshitta. Topic Armenian canon topic The Armenian Bible introduces one edition, a third letter to the Corinthians, also found in the Acts of Paul, which became canonized in the Armenian Church, but is not part of the Armenian Bible today. Revelation, however, was not accepted into the Armenian Bible until c. 
1200, when Archbishop Nurses arranged an Armenian synod at Constantinople to introduce the text. Still, there were unsuccessful attempts even as late as 1290 to include in the Armenian canon several apocryphal books, Advice of the Mother of God to the Apostles, the Books of Kriapos, and the ever-popular Epistle of Barnabas. The Armenian Apostolic Church at times has included the testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs in its Old Testament and the Third Epistle to the Corinthians, but does not always list it with the other 27 canonical New Testament books. Coptic and Ethiopian canons Topic. The New Testament of the Coptic Bible, adopted by the Egyptian Church, includes the two epistles of Clement. The canon of the Tewahedo churches is somewhat looser than for other traditional Christian groups, and the order, naming, and chapter, verse division of some of the books is also slightly different. The broader Ethiopian New Testament canon includes four books of synodos. Church practices, two, Books of Covenant, Ethiopic Clement, and Ethiopic Didascalia, Apostolic Church Ordinances. However, these books have never been printed or widely studied. This, broader, canon is also sometimes said to include, with the Old Testament, an eight-part history of the Jews based on the writings of Flavius Josephus, and known as, Pseudo-Josephus, or, Joseph ben Gurion, Yosef Valda Corian. Topic. Protestant developments from c. 1517 Topic. The Encyclopedia of Theology says that the 27 books which make up the New Testament canon of Scripture are not based on a scriptural list that authenticates them to be inspired, thus their legitimacy is considered impossible to be distinguished with certainty without appealing to another infallible source, such as the Magisterium of the Catholic Church which first assembled and authenticated this list at the Council of Rome. Catholicism considers the magisterium, i.e. the teaching authority, has equal position and linked together with sacred tradition and sacred scripture, each acts in its own way for the goodness of the Church. Rejecting these, Protestant reformers focused on the doctrine of sola scriptura, i.e. the supreme authority of scripture alone. Sola scriptura is one of the five solas, considered by some Protestant groups to be the theological pillars of the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther Topic. Martin Luther was troubled by four books, referred to as Luther's Antilegomena, Jude, James, Hebrews, and Revelation, and though he placed them in a secondary position relative to the rest, he did not exclude them. He did propose removing them from the canon, echoing the consensus of several Catholics such as Cardinal Cahiton and Erasmus, and partially because they were perceived to go against certain Protestant doctrines such as sola gratia and sola fide, but this was not generally accepted among his followers. However, these books are ordered last in the German-language Luther Bible to this day. Topic. Protestant Confessions. Topic. Among confessions of faith drawn up by Protestants, several identify by name the 27 books of the New Testament canon, including the French Confession of Faith 1559, the Belgic Confession 1561, and the Westminster Confession of Faith 1647 during the English Civil War. The 39 Articles, issued by the Church of England in 1563, names the books of the Old Testament, but not the New Testament. None of the confessional statements issued by any Lutheran church includes an explicit list of canonical books. Topic: Evangelical Canons. Topic: Many evangelical Christian groups which have their origin in C. 1730 England do not accept the theory that the Christian Bible was not known until various local and ecumenical councils which they deem to be Roman dominated made their official declarations. These groups believe that the New Testament supports that Paul 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 11 to 13, Peter 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 15 to 16, and ultimately John Revelation chapter 22 verses 18 to 19 finalized the canon of the New Testament. Some note that Peter, John, and Paul wrote 20 or 21 of the 27 books of the NT and personally knew all the other NT writers. Books not attributed to these three are Matthew, Mark, Luke, Acts, James, and Jude. 
The authorship of Hebrews has long been disputed. Many modern Protestants point to four criteria for canonicity to justify the books that have been included in the Old and New Testament, which are judged to have satisfied the following Apostolic origin, attributed to and based on the preaching, teaching of the first generation apostles or their close companions. Universal acceptance, acknowledged by all major Christian communities in the ancient world by the end of the 4th century. Liturgical use, read publicly when early Christian communities gathered for the Lord's Supper their weekly worship services. Consistent message, containing a theological outlook similar or complementary to other accepted Christian writings. The basic factor for recognizing a book's canonicity for the New Testament was divine inspiration, and the chief test for this was apostolicity. The term apostolic is used for the test of canonicity does not necessarily mean apostolic authorship or derivation, but rather apostolic authority. Apostolic authority is never detached from the authority of the Lord. See Apostolic Succession. It is sometimes difficult to apply these criteria to all books in the accepted canon, however, and some point to books that Protestants hold as apocryphal which would fulfill these requirements. In practice, Protestants hold to the Jewish canon for the Old Testament and the Catholic canon for the New Testament. Topic. Catholic developments from c. 1546 Topic. Topic. Council of Trent Topic. The Council of Trent on April 8, 1546, approved the enforcement of the present Roman Catholic Bible canon including the deuterocanonical books as an article of faith the contents of the canon itself having already been reaffirmed unanimously, and the decision was confirmed by an anathema by vote 24 yea, 15 nay, 16 abstain. This is said to be the same list as produced at the Council of Florence, session 11, the 4th of February 1442, Augustine's 397 to 419 Councils of Carthage and probably Damasus. 382 Council of Rome. Because of its placement, the list was not considered binding for the Catholic Church, and in light of Martin Luther's demands, the Catholic Church examined the question of the canon again at the Council of Trent, which reaffirmed the canon of previous councils and added the anathema against attempts to change the contents of the canon. Later developments Vatican I on April 24, 1870 approved the additions to Mark v. 16-9-20, Luke 19 b 20 43-44, and John 7 which are not present in early manuscripts but are contained in the Vulgate edition. Pope Pius XI on June 2, 1927 decreed the Comma Johannium was open to dispute. Pope Pius XII on 3 September 1943 issued the encyclical Divino Afflante Spiritu, which allowed translations based on texts other than the Latin Vulgate. Topic: <laughs> Orthodox developments from c. 1672. Topic. <laughs> Topic: Synod of Jerusalem. Topic. The Synod of Jerusalem in 1672 decreed the Greek Orthodox canon which is similar as the one decided by the Council of Trent. They call ed sacred scripture all those books which Cyril collected from the Synod of Laodicea, and enumerated, adding to scripture those which he foolishly and ignorantly, or rather maliciously, called Apocrypha, specifically, list of deuterocanonical books. But it is to be noted that this was simply an affirmation of tradition, not a new canonization. As the Confession goes on to state, "...ancient custom, or rather the Catholic Church, which has delivered to us as genuine the sacred Gospels and the other books of Scripture, has undoubtedly delivered these deuterocanonical books also as parts of Scripture." And if, perhaps, it seems that not always have all of these been considered on the same level as the others, yet nevertheless these also have been counted and reckoned with the rest of Scripture, both by synods and by many of the most ancient and eminent theologians of the Catholic Church. All of these we also judge to be canonical books, and confess them to be sacred Scripture. <laughs> 
Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic Topic Bibliography Topic Topic Sources Topic Augustine, Aurelius, De Civitate Dei on the City of God in Latin. Pamphili, Eusebius, Schaff, Philip, ed., Ecclesiastical History, The Christian Classics Ethereal Library. Studies Ackroyd, P. R., Evans, C. F., E. D. S., 1970, The Cambridge History of the Bible, 1, Cambridge University Press. Bachham, Richard 2006, Jesus and the Eyewitnesses, Cambridge, Eerdmans. Badoon, Jason 2013, The First New Testament. Marcion's Scriptural Canon, Polbridge Press. Borgel, Jonathan. Do the synoptic narratives of the Passion contain a stratum composed in Judea on the eve of the Great Revolt? NTS 58 503-21, French. Brack, David. 1994. Canon formation and social conflict in fourth century Egypt. Athanasius of Alexandria's 39th Festal Letter. Harvard Theological Review, 87 to 395-419. Bruce, F. F. 1988. The Canon of Scripture. InterVarsity Press. De Jong, H. J. 2003. The New Testament Canon. In De Jong, H. J., Ours, J. M., The Biblical Canons, Leuven University Press Ferguson, Everett 2002. Factors Leading to the Selection and Closure of the New Testament Canon. In MacDonald, L. M., Sanders, Yaw, The Canon Debate, Hendrickson. Gamble, Harry 1985, The New Testament Canon. Its Making and Meaning, Fortress Press. Kruger, Michael 2012, Canon Revisited. Establishing the Origins and Authority of the New Testament Books, Crossway. Kruger, Michael 2013, The Question of Canon. Challenging the Status Quo in the New Testament Debate, InterVarsity Press. Lindbergh, Carter 2006, A Brief History of Christianity, Blackwell, ISBN 1-4051-1078-3. MacDonald, L. M., Sanders, Yaw, eds. 2002, The Canon Debate, Hendrickson. Metzger, Bruce 1987, The Canon of the New Testament, Its Origins, Development, and Significance, Oxford, Clarendon. Knoll, Mark A. 1997, Turning Points, Decisive Moments in the History of Christianity, Baker Academic. External links the development of the canon of the New Testament, includes very detailed charts and direct links to ancient witnesses. Price, Robert, The Evolution of the Pauline Canon.